Reporting, joining me live is manager of opposition business, Paul Fletcher. Paul, thanks for joining us. What, what's your response to that? Well, let's look here at what the underlying public policy issue is. When we saw uh, reports uh, in Joe Aston's new book, uh, claims made by Joe Aston as the author of that book, that sources had told him that Mr Albanese would personally ask the chief executive of Qantas for upgrades, uh, that obviously sparked a considerable degree of media interest. Now, the public policy issue is this. Uh, what is the nature of Mr Albanese's friendship with Mr Joyce and his relationship with Qantas? And does it impact on decisions such as the decision last year when there was an application by Qatar to have 28 additional flights a week between Australia and its hub in the Middle East and then on to other parts of the world? Now, that would have produced increased competition in aviation. That would have reduced airfares for Australians at a time when we're all facing cost of living pressures, but Australians do like our travel uh, for very good reason. Uh, and yet we had a whole series of explanations from the Minister Catherine King as to why that Qatar application had been refused. It is certainly a legitimate question to ask, was uh, Mr Albanese involved in that decision? Well, he was a Prime Minister, so it wouldn't have happened without him. And was he influenced because of his closeness with Mr Joyce and with Qantas. The Prime Minister earlier this week pointed out 69 flight upgrades that you've been awarded since 2009. Why so many? Well, uh, what I have explained, it's indeed explained in my disclosures, is that my practice is when I'm taking a domestic flight of less than two hours, so that's Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra, I uh, go economy. So the rules say politicians can travel business uh, on all domestic flights. My, the personal rule I've set for myself is to travel economy. That happened to be the rule that the last company I worked for, Optus, domestic flights less than two hours you go economy. It seemed to me like a sensible measure. Now, the airline will sometimes give you upgrades. I've been in the parliament almost 15 years. That's, <laughs> that's how you get to 69. I mean, most and none of your staffers have contacted Qantas no, to, I've, to ask. I've, I've never asked for an upgrade. Um, uh, I've made it clear to my staff not to ask, and particularly I've made it clear to my staff, uh, book in economy, uh, and that has been my practice. My view is that's a way of not spending more on travel than needs to be spent. Um, so that, that, that's the reason. There's a push now, particularly from independent Senator David Pocock, that there needs to be reforms around airline upgrades. Do you agree? Uh, well, there's a set of disclosure rules which need to be complied with. I think one of the issues that's emerged this week is whether Mr Albanese can complied with those disclosure rules in respect of flights for family members. Um, so the first thing is to make sure that everybody is complying with the disclosure rules. And look, the public policy issue here again is if you're travelling for work, and all politicians travel a lot, we're a big country, we're on planes a lot. Um, I think the nature of the allegations in the book this week were that when Mr Albanese was on personal trips, uh, travelling, say, uh, you know, booked and paid for an economy flight to another part of the world for a holiday, and everybody's entitled to take a holiday, but was he asking for upgrades in that context? Now, that's the question, that's the allegation. I'm not making a claim, I'm simply saying that is what has been reported was the allegation in the book that uh, Joe Aston has released this week. And that, I think, is one of the issues that has generated a lot of interest. OK, Paul, we've got to run. We're out of time, but thanks for...